There's nothing worse if you are a creator and you want to sell your beautiful creations online and you realise you've left it up because you're really bad at photography and lighting. So today I'm going to show you five very, very simple uh, photography lighting setups that you can do at home with zero professional gear. We are scrapping the professional gear. The most professional thing that you are going to need with you if you really want to push the boat out is a 5-in-1 reflector diffuser and a grey card. That is it. Everything else? No soft boxes, no light boxes, it's all gone, okay? I'm going to show you how to do this at home with some basic fundamentals, okay? We are going to do five different um, light setups. Some are, are natural light, so you're going to need a window, and some are going to be artificial. And what I'll say to you about the artificial is we have some ways around this, okay? And I'm going to be sharing them with you today, so make sure you stick around. If you're new here, hi, I'm Robin from Robin O'Brien Photography and Robin's Academy, and I basically teach you how to take pictures that you're proud to share. Um, obviously, if you're, if, you're, if you're coming back for a second time, why haven't you subscribed yet? Subscribe. Hit that notification bell to make sure that you receive these videos every single week when they come out. Um, so basically, there are going to be some fundamental things that you need, okay? You're going to need some white paper, don't feel like that's going to break the bank if I'm particularly honest. You're going to need a piece of card, you're going to need some box standard clips, um, clamps. I thought I had one to hand, but I apparently don't. I've apparently left it down there with backdrops. You are going to need some backdrops, okay? And backdrops though is, is probably the hardest part about all of these things, but if you're doing a traditional white, then it's a white piece of paper. Again, we're not going to break the bank on this. We're going to keep it as simple as possible. So whether you're an Etsy seller and you want to sell your creations or you're a blogger and you simply want to put together your own products or affiliate photos so that you can, you know, earn that little bit of money, uh, that's all important. Then we're gonna go through exactly step-by-step step how to set it up, how to shoot, how to get those different feelings. It doesn't really matter what the product is, what I will say is certain lightings have a certain dependency to go with different types of lighting. So food photography is very good for backlighting and side lighting. And that's why they're very, very popular with the natural light, because it's very easy to do at home in a very simple format. However, there are other things like a flat lay. Flat lays tend to work slightly better when you've got the light from above. And therefore, you need to be thinking about your direction. If you don't know your basics of your lighting, then you need to go and check out that video because I will not be going over those again. Um, I will simply be telling you that you need a backlight, okay? And um, this is how to set it up at home when you don't want all the fancy, stupid extra stuff. So the first one that we're going to do is we're going to do natural backlighting, okay? As I said, backlighting is great for things like bottles, um, things like uh, anything that's like that kind of, you want that fresh feeling. If you want that fresh feeling, so you're, you're thinking things like your cosmetics and you're thinking things like um, food, all of that kind of stuff, backlighting works fine because you get a nice glowy softness, okay? I will say to you that picking the right window in your house is essential for natural lighting. And if you don't know how to do that, then you need to have a quick read um, because we tell you exactly how to do that. Should we just jump in? It sounds very, very sensible just to jump in and I can go through each one as we go. So today we're going to be looking at how to take a picture of soap because, well, I had some soap in and I had some interesting things to go with it. So it was quite itchy. So the first thing you're obviously going to need to gather is you're going to need to gather your background any props that you want for this particular shoot and your product, your subject, because that's going to be helpful when you're trying to take a picture of your subject, isn't it? Don't you think? Might be, might be used, might be just a tad. As you can see, it's not a, a massive setup. It is literally just a piece of paper on a table with your item on it with the window next to it. Now, there will be times when the sun is very, very strong. Closing white curtains is an easy way of doing it. You don't have white curtains, just literally pin up your bed sheet it works just as well that's also a really good one just if you're thinking about those things finally there will be times when the sun has set and you're sitting there thinking i don't have natural light robin what the hell do i do okay so we're going to do two um settings for if you want light and airy still and if you want dark and moody okay so number one is quite literally we're going to do a backlight i'm going to show you how a couple of mistakes first so you can kind of see what not to do, okay? So so I have quite literally just set it up on a little table. I've got my, my um, 
black velvet uh, background you could just use a white one this has just got a bit of texture in it because i prefer it i've set it up we've got the window because you need a window but you can see that shadow and that harsh shadow there there are a couple of ways that you can deal with this you can either choose to quite literally just get a reflector and manipulate that reflector until you kind of fill in some of that shadow you can kind of move it until you kind of think yeah that's where i want it so you know you get a bit more of a bounce back to fill in that shadow before after you can kind of see the difference so that's something just to bear in mind you're going to need a reflector alternative that big shadow that you've got at the back all you need to do is raise it up a bit more so as you can see that's much more of a clear background now what we're going to do is just take a quick shot with the appropriate settings and we'll see what happens we're going to go to dark quite literally we're going to go to dark and we're going to get an led light so that you can see what the difference between an led light and literally just a box standard day bulb um we've got plenty of them in this house because i won't allow anything else and i want to show you the differences okay to capture the um led so it's pitch black outside there's no light you don't want to use your normal um house lights this is how i set it up and i'll show you the dark version once it goes dark your next one is quite literally aside and you're literally just going to rotate everything around and you're literally going to position yourself so that you are parallel to the window and what happens is is that you get this nice side shadow next to your product it's nice and soft it's nice and diffused today we've got nice cloudy weather which is great um again if you thought that was too much and you were going for a um flat lay just quite literally fill that shadow in manipulate your light using your different bits until you have it where you want it you still need light to do dark and moody okay this is the big thing that you need to bear in mind so we're going to do two new setups i am going to change the background for the dark and moody because the light and airy background does not work and it is something you need to think about when you're going for those different feels so remember when you're doing uh the dark and moody style of photography you really are playing with the, the iso of the situation set your aperture first because that's your depth of field and then start balancing between your shutter speed and your iso to make sure that you've got obviously the exposure that you want it can be challenging especially when um they want to get what they call the even exposure and therefore they will sometimes overexpose like this and you go no that's not dark and moody by any stretch of any imagination um, and then it's just about playing with those settings again in order to get the 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 artistic view that you want try not to overthink these things to be honest because there are a multitude of different ways that you can get these shots and the important thing is that you think about what the light styling is adding to your photo okay especially when you're doing product photography because nine times out of ten you are creating that scene you have a choice of all of these which one suits your product the most okay because then you're starting to add to that story. If you don't know how to plan a product a product photo shoot at all, and you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, this is brilliant, this is exactly what I need, and I'd like to learn more, then I would totally recommend that you check out Perfect Products. It allows you to go through each step of these things, starting with your backdrops, your props, your stylings, your compositions, everything, down to the editing at the very, very end of it, uh, to ensure that you get the sales that you are looking for at the end of the day. Um, I would love to know which of these tips helped you the most and which lighting style you would most likely choose. And as always, we appreciate you. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button because we do regular giveaways and fun stuff, um, which you don't want to miss.